Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another very exciting video tutorial. So, by the end of this video tutorial, you will, you will be able to make a simple breakout like game. So let me just run the breakout game right now. As you can see, I have a breakout, the ball bouncing, and I can move this white block over here. And notice whenever the ball touches the brick, the brick automatically gets removed. So by the end of this video tutorial, you'll be able to make this simple, fun game. It's just missing the win and lose logic, but we will implement that in the part 2. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to open up Xcode Beta. Now I'm going to create a new Xcode project. And I'm going to choose iOS. I'm going to make an iOS game because Breakout is an iOS game. Mix. And the product name is essentially the application name. And I'm going to call this Breakout. The team, organization name, organization identifier, as well as the banner identifier. I just ways for Apple to identify your application. Unless you are planning to release this application onto the App Store, you do not have to really bother with this. Make sure the language is Swift because that is the language that we will be using to program our application. Game technology, as you can see, there are a variety of game technologies, but in this case, we're going to focus on Sprite Kit. Devices, to just to keep things simple, we're just going to stay as iPhone. Don't check anything here, let's click Next. Now it's going to ask you where you want to save your Xcode project. In this case, I'm just going to save it in the desktop. So now, head into the game scene SKS, and this is where you'll be able to set up your game scene. So click on the hello label, right click, and delete, because we don't need the label at all. So first, what we need to do is we need to have a color sprite. And let's just resize this. A little bit too small, let me just adjust it. Okay, so now that I have this SK Sprite node, what I'm going to do is do Command C, Command V. Let's copy it. Command V one more time just to paste it, and now, as you can see, I have three identical um, SK Sprite nodes. Now, what we're going to do is to copy and paste six more times, so that we have nine bricks. So, Command C, Command V, okay, so now that we have 9 bricks over here, let's customize the color for each of the bricks. Make sure each of them have a different color. So let's give this a color of maybe green. Let's give this color of blue, light blue. Let's give this a color of yellow, bright yellow. Let's give this a color of turquoise. Let's give this a color of kind of like a purplish. Let's give this a color of a nice blue. Let's give this a color of yellow. And last but not least, let's give this a color of. Mm, lime green. Okay, brilliant. Looks beautiful. So now, you're going to click on any SK Sprite node that you've created. Command C and Command V. Now, this will be the paddle in which uh, the user will be able to drag across. Let's give this a little bit more width. A bit more height as well. And let's give this color of white. Let's press in the center. And try our best to get white. 
print. Place it around at the bottom, and you're good to go. So the last thing we need is the ball. So there's actually no way to create a ball with a color sprite. So what we're gonna do is to have some assets. I'm gonna come to my finder, my documents, and I have this three person not PNG. Okay, by now you should have already uh this three graphical assets in your assets folder. And then we have three persons. Come back to your game scene and let's drag the color sprite. But this time, give it a texture of person with a capital P. And then holding down shift, you want to de decrease the size of it. And for reference, if you want it, the width is 61, or the height is 61 as well. Place it anywhere you like, just make sure it's between the bricks as well as the panel. Now select all the bricks by holding down shift and selecting all of them, I mean holding down command and select all of them. Okay, make sure you hold down command and let's give them the name of brick. The point of the name is just to allow us to reference them okay, later for use in our code. And then heading down to the physics definition and heading to bounding rectangle. We don't want this to be dynamic because we want them to stay put. We don't want them to allow rotation, we don't want them to rotate, and we don't want them to be affected by gravity. Friction, set it to zero, such that when the ball collides with them, the ball speeds will not be slowed down. Restitution refers to the bounciness, and in this case, these bricks are not going to bounce, so it's okay for them to be zero. Linear and angular damping are not really important, so we can just leave it them as default. The category mass is going to give this of category mass of 1. Okay, so essentially the category mass is responsible for managing the collisions as well as the contact between the various physics of the SK sprite node. Collision mass, we want this to be able to collide the ball. So, and the category mass of the ball will be 2, and we want to collide it with the ball's category mass, hence we set it to 2. Field mass, we're not going to work with the field mass, so set it to 0. Contact mass, we're not, we want it to have contact with the ball, so let's set it to 2. Okay, brilliant. Now click on the paddle and give it a name of paddle with a capital P. Hit scroll down the physics definition and give this a body type of bounding rectangle. Okay, so same thing, just uncheck all of these. Friction, 0. We don't want this to, we don't want the ball to slow down whenever the ball hits it. Restitution, 0. We don't want it to bounce anyway. And the category mass, make sure it's 1 as well. We want it to collide with the ball, which has a category mass of 2. Field mass, 0. Contact mass, we want it to have contact with the ball. So let's set it to 2 as well. Last but not least, the ball itself. Scroll up and give this a name of ball. And the body type. Of your type bounding rectangle. Now this time you have to check dynamic. We don't want it to rotate, nor do we want it to be affected by gravity. Friction set it to zero. Restitution refers to the bounciness of the ball, and in this case we want to actually make it bouncy. So let's set it to one, which is the max value for restitution. Linear damping and angular damping set, set both of these to zero, such that they, the ball will not be slowed down by any rotations. Category mass set it to two. Collide mass, we want it to collide with both the bricks as well as the paddle, and both of these have a category have a category mass of two. So I mean have a category mass of one. So let's give it one. We're not gonna work with any field mass, so let's set it to zero. Contact mass. We want it to contact with the bricks as well as the paddle, so we need to give this a contact mass of one. Okay. So now that we're done, if we the stuff. Um, before that, you want to change it to iPhone 7. Okay, just click on this and change to iPhone 7. And to build your application or build your game, click on the play button and you'll be able to run your game. And now we have, as you can see, we have our basic layout already set up. As simple as that. So, as you can hear, maybe you can hear um, my computer is really starting to overheat. So, I'll return when my computer has cooled down. 
Okay, so welcome back. My computer has finally cooled down, and let's start writing some code. I'm gonna quit the simulator, okay? And now let's head into game scene.swift. As you can see, there's a bunch of uh, starter code in the file. What I want you to do is go to the second last brace and delete everything, okay, except for the top of the class. Delete, and you should be left with the first brace as well as the second brace. Now, let's start typing some code. So, first, we want to get the ball. So, var ball. And add a colon and to specify that this is of type sk sprite node. Okay, and the explanation point is just to say that this does not have a value now, but it will have a value later on. Next will be var pedal. We need to get the pedal. And this is also of type sk sprite node. Now let's override the dip move to view. And this is where we will set up our scene. So first we need to uh, give the ball a value equals sk sprite node actually self dot char node with name so it's gonna get the node with the name of in this case it'll be ball and then we need to downcast it to an sk sprite node because we specified that this is of type sk sprite node same goes to the pedal Okay, so now that we have um, instantiated the ball and pedal, let's do let's apply an impulse to the ball by ball dot physics body dot apply impulse, and this takes an argument of CG vector. The dx just refers to how much we want to move along the x-axis. In this case, let's move by like fifty. Y for the dy is just pretty much the same thing, but how much force you want to apply. Uh, through the y-axis. Okay, now let's blue run it and see how it goes. And as you can see, the ball just went out of the scene. So what we need to do is to actually add a border to the view, to the scene instead. So I'm going to say let border is equal to sk physics body. And we're going to choose the edge loop from the cg rect. In this case, would be the view dot scene dot frame. Okay, so you just um, have a loop through the all four sides of the view, and it's gonna give us an error, some optional error thing. So let's just fix it, and let's replace, and we're done. Now I'm gonna set the border dot friction equals to zero. We don't want when the ball hits the border, the ball will not be slowed down by the border. And then you want to just physics ball equals to the border itself, like so. Okay, so it's giving us an error again. Expected assignment. Oops. Okay, let me just summarize what, what we did here. It's just we created a border. Then we set the friction equal to zero such that the ball will not be slowed down when it collides with the border. Then we applied the border to the physics world of the scene. So now if we build and run it, we should see that our ball is caged within the scene itself. As you can see, it's a cage within the, um, the scene itself. So now let's move uh, at functionality that will allow us to move the pattern itself. So first you need to override the touches begin. As well as the touch is moved. So for the touch begin, for touch in touches. So what this does is that for every touch in the all the touches, okay, we want to get the touch location first, which will be touch dot location in self in the scene itself. Then we want to set the pedal dot position dot, I mean equal to cg point actually we can just say dot x is equal to the touch location dot x so essentially this 
line of code will just update the pedal position along the x-axis to the x position of the touch location. So we're going to do the same thing for touches moved. So let's just copy it and paste it right in here. And now if we put it and run it, we should see that we can move our pedal. So now as you can see, if I try to move the pedal up, we can't. Because we did not specifically change the uh, pedal position along the y-axis. Hey, brilliant. So now what we want to do is to remove the brake whenever the ball has collided with it. So to do that, we need to confirm to the SK Physics Contact Delegate. Then what we need to do is to set the self dot physics world dot contact delegate equals to self. So this will allow us to access all the contact within our physics world. So now with that delegate, we can now implement the function. Okay, we can now implement the function of did begin contact. So whenever there's contact, you want first you want to get body A. So let body A body A name body A name equals to contact dot body A dot load dot name and let the body B name equals to the contact dot body B dot node dot name so we will be using the name property to check whether that name specifically points to a particular SK Sprite node. So now I'm going to say if the body A name is equal to ball, which means if the first body involved in the contact is the ball, and we need to specify the body B, in this case, we're going to check whether the body related in the contact is the brick. And from here, you can check, do it whatever you want. However, sometimes the body A name may be the brick, and sometimes the body B name may be the ball. So we have to, we have to provide uh, the conditions for that as well. So if body B, will be body A name is equal. The brick and using these this logical n operator body p name equals ball. Okay. So from here, what we want to do is to say if the body a name is equals brick. So we want to get the brick. Then let's add an else if body b name equals the brick. So we're just going to get the break no matter what. And over here, we're going to say contact dot body a dot node dot remove from parents. And because, because we can't access use the body a name to actually assess the node itself, we have to rewrite everything. So let's do the same thing. So contact dot body b dot node dot remove from parents. So the remove from parent function just removes the particular node from the scene. So let's build and run it. So whenever the ball is collided with a brick, the brick should remove, should be removed. So let's see how it goes. So now we go as you can see the brick removes. It removes. And now we have a fully functional breakout game. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this breakout game. In the part 2 of this tutorial, we're going to implement win and lose logic into this breakout game. Stay tuned for part 2. So this is pretty much the end of this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial as much as I do making this video tutorial. And to this band, peace out. Mm -hmm.